The sound of raindrops tapping on the window pane matched the heaviness in my heart as I entered our cozy living room. I had just returned home from another long day at work, hoping to find solace in the familiar warmth of our home. Our house had always been a sanctuary, a place where laughter and love filled the air. Little did I know that evening it would transform into a battlefield tearing our family apart. As I set my wet umbrella by the door, I couldn't ignore the raised voices that echoed from the living room. My heart quickened with dread as I realized it was John, my husband, and Margaret, his mother, engaged in a fierce argument. James, John's father, sat silently in his wheelchair, a look of despair etched across his face. With each step closer to the living room, the tension became palpable. My footsteps felt heavy, as if I were treading on eggshells. I knew John and Margaret had their disagreements, but they'd always managed to resolve them. This felt different, raw, and unrestrained. Pushing the door open, I was greeted by a scene that left me stunned. John's face was flushed with anger, his usually warm eyes now blazing with intensity. Margaret, usually the embodiment of grace, was equally furious. Their voices clashed in a tumultuous crescendo, drowning out any attempts at reason. My heart pounding, I stepped between them, trying desperately to mediate and bring some semblance of calm to the room. The words exchanged were hurtful and venomous, making me wonder if this was the same family I had known and loved. Then, in the midst of their tumultuous argument, John dropped a bombshell that would alter the course of our lives forever. He confessed that he was leaving, abandoning his father, James, and me to move in with his side chick, Sarah. The room fell silent for a moment, as if time had stopped. The shockwaves of his revelation rippled through me, leaving me breathless and numb. Sarah, a woman who had been a friend to our family for years, was the last person I had ever expected this from. My world crumbled in that instant, and I turned to James, who was silently weeping in his wheelchair. The days that followed that tumultuous Tuesday evening were a blur of emotions and disbelief. As the shock of John's revelation settled in, our family dynamic continued to unravel at a dizzying pace. With John and Margaret's departure, our once vibrant home became an empty shell, echoing with memories of happier times. The laughter and joy that had once filled our house now seemed like distant echoes from a different lifetime. The atmosphere was thick with tension, and the walls seemed to bear witness to the rupture within our family. James, who'd been confined to a wheelchair for years due to a devastating accident, was profoundly affected by the chaos that had erupted. He had always been a stoic and resilient man, but the abandonment by his own son weighed heavily on him. His once lively eyes now held a perpetual sadness, and he became increasingly despondent. I, on the other hand, found myself thrust into a new role I hadn't anticipated. I had to navigate the challenges of not only coping with the betrayal of my husband, but also providing emotional and physical support to James, whose world had crumbled around him. The responsibilities that came with caregiving became overwhelming, but I was determined to stand by his side. Friends and family rallied around us, offering their support and sympathy, but nothing could fill the void left by John and Margaret. Our lives had been turned upside down in an instant, and the wounds of betrayal ran deep. As I looked at James, who had been my rock for so many years, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of responsibility and love for him. We were facing an uncertain future, one filled with challenges and uncertainties, but I was determined to do whatever it took to help him find his footing in this new reality. In the wake of John and Margaret's sudden departure, our household descended into a state of disarray and confusion. The absence of two key family members left a void that was impossible to ignore, and our lives were thrown into disarray. The house, once a haven of love and togetherness, felt eerily empty. Their absence seemed to cast a long, dark shadow over every room, a constant reminder of the rupture in our family. The pictures on the walls, once filled with smiling faces, now felt like haunting relics of happier times. James, my father-in-law, bore the brunt of this upheaval. His life, already constrained by the wheelchair that had been his constant companion for years, was now further marred by the abandonment of his son. He spent long hours gazing out the window, lost in thought and often in tears. It was heartbreaking to witness his anguish. As for me, 
I became the anchor in a storm-tossed sea. I juggled my full-time job and the responsibilities of caregiving for James, all while trying to come to terms with the shocking turn of events. My emotions ranged from anger and betrayal to sadness and confusion. The questions of why and how could they do this constantly haunted my thoughts. The days seemed to blur together as I struggled to maintain a semblance of normalcy in a once thriving household. The isolation and loneliness of our situation weighed heavily on us. Friends and family reached out, offering their support, but the wounds were too fresh, the pain too deep to be easily assuaged. Despite the chaos and heartache, I was determined not to let our family crumble completely. I knew that James needed me more than ever, and I was committed to being his unwavering source of support. Together, we began to explore resources and support networks for wheelchair users, hoping to bring some sense of structure back into our lives. In the aftermath of John and Margaret's departure, our home had become a sanctuary of sorrow. Each day was a battle against the overwhelming emotions that threatened to consume us. As time passed, we tried to find a way to cope with the void they had left behind. My daily routine became a delicate balancing act, juggling the demands of my job and the responsibilities of caring for James, my father-in-law. He had always been a strong and self-sufficient man, but the events of the past weeks had taken a heavy toll on his spirit. His dependence on me grew, and I gladly took on the role of his caregiver, determined to provide him with the support he needed. Our household, once filled with laughter and shared moments, was now marked by a profound silence. The absence of John's boisterous laughter and Margaret's gentle presence hung in the air like a heavy fog. Even the simple act of setting the dinner table was a poignant reminder of the empty chairs that surrounded it. The isolation of our situation weighed on both of us. James, confined to his wheelchair, yearned for the camaraderie of his family. I, too, missed the sense of belonging and the companionship that had defined our lives before the rift. We received an outpouring of support from friends and family, who did their best to alleviate our pain. They offered comfort and condolences, but the wounds ran deep and the sense of betrayal was not easily assuaged. As the weeks turned into months, we sought solace in the routines we established. Our daily conversations, no matter how brief, became a lifeline. We talked about our dreams, our hopes, and the memories we cherished. It was in these moments that we found a semblance of normalcy, a respite from the overwhelming sadness that permeated our home. In the wake of the chaos and heartache that had gripped our family, James and I began the arduous process of rebuilding our lives. While the wounds from John and Margaret's sudden departure still festered, we knew we had to find a wayward, no matter how uncertain the path might be. Our home, once a bustling hub of activity, had transformed into a sanctuary of solitude. The echoes of laughter at family gatherings seemed like distant memories. The void left by John's absence was palpable, but we couldn't let it consume us entirely. James, my father-in-law, had always been a pillar of strength. Even though he was confined to a wheelchair due to a life-altering accident years ago, his resilience remained an inspiration. I became his constant companion and caregiver, assisting him with daily tasks, providing emotional support, and seeking ways to make his life more comfortable. One of my first priorities was to explore resources and support networks for wheelchair users. We attended support group meetings where James found solace in connecting with others facing similar challenges. It was a relief to see him interact with people who understood his struggles, and it gave him a renewed sense of purpose. I continued working my full-time job, trying to maintain a semblance of normalcy in our lives. The routine offered a sense of stability amidst the chaos, and it was a welcome distraction from the emotional turmoil that often threatened to overwhelm me. Our family and friends remained a source of strength during this difficult time. Their unwavering support and willingness to listen provided a much-needed lifeline. They encouraged us to focus on our own well-being, urging us not to be consumed by the pain of the past. Slowly but surely, we began to rebuild our lives. We found comfort in the little things. A shared meal, a heartfelt conversation, or a moment of laughter. It was in these moments that we realized that while our family had been forever changed, our love and resilience could help us navigate the uncertain future. 
As James and I continued the difficult process of rebuilding our lives in the aftermath of John and Margaret's departure, our home slowly transformed from a place of sorrow into a sanctuary of healing and resilience. However, it was during this time that an unexpected turn of events unfolded, one that challenged the boundaries of forgiveness and compassion. Several months had passed since John and Margaret left, and our family dynamic was gradually evolving. While the pain of their absence still lingered, James and I had learned to lean on each other for support. Our once empty home now held a sense of warmth and togetherness as we navigated life's challenges together. One day, as we were sharing a rare moment of laughter over a cup of tea, there came a knock at the door. I glanced at James, who seemed just as surprised as I was. Visitors had become a rare occurrence in our quiet home. I opened the door to find Margaret standing there, her appearance noticeably changed. She looked wary and worn down by the choices she'd made. Her eyes once filled with anger and defiance, now held a vulnerability I had never seen before. Margaret hesitated for a moment before speaking. She admitted that John's relationship with Sarah had fallen apart, leaving him in a state of emotional turmoil. He was struggling to pick up the pieces of his life, and he had reached out to her for support. The news was met with a mix of emotions, anger, confusion, and empathy. While I had been deeply hurt by their actions, I couldn't ignore the fact that Margaret was a mother grappling with her son's pain. James, too, seemed torn, caught between his desire to reconnect with his son and the betrayal he had felt. Reluctantly, we allowed Margaret back into our lives, albeit cautiously. It was a complex and delicate process, marked by moments of awkwardness and tension. Yet, as time passed, we began to see a different side of Margaret, a mother who had made mistakes but was willing to make amends. With Margaret's unexpected return to our lives, our family found itself on a path of reconciliation, forgiveness, and healing. While the wounds from John and Margaret's departure still ran deep, we were slowly learning to navigate the complexities of rebuilding our relationships. The days and weeks that followed Margaret's return were marked by a cautious dance as we tiptoed around the emotions and scars of the past. Our home, once defined by tension and silence, began to feel more like a family once again. Margaret, who'd been the catalyst for so much pain, seemed genuinely remorseful for her actions. She took the time to sit down with James and me, expressing her regret and sorrow over the choices she had made. It was evident that she had suffered her own share of heartache during her time away from us. As for James, his feelings remained complex. He had experienced profound hurt and betrayal at the hands of his own son, and it was not something he could easily put behind him. However, he recognized that John, despite his mistakes, was still his son, and he yearned for some form of reconciliation. Our interactions with John, though initially strained, gradually evolved into a process of rebuilding trust. He too seemed changed by his experiences, humbled by the realization of the impact his actions had on our family. Slowly but surely, he began to make amends, showing a genuine commitment to being a better son and husband. Through countless conversations, tears, and shared moments, our family began the arduous journey of healing. We learned that forgiveness was a process, one that required time, patience, and a willingness to let go of the past. Our family had been through the depths of despair, but we were determined to rise above it together. While our relationships were far from perfect, they were marked by a newfound sense of understanding and empathy. We realized that family bonds could withstand even the most devastating of betrayals, as long as there was a willingness to forgive and rebuild. With forgiveness and healing taking root within our family, we embarked on a journey of rebuilding our lives and forging new connections. Chapter 8 marked a significant turning point as we began to move beyond the pain of the past and look toward a brighter future. Our household, once a place of sorrow and tension, had transformed into a more harmonious environment. The shared moments of laughter and conversation had become increasingly frequent, providing us with a sense of normalcy that had long been absent. It was evident that our bonds were growing stronger, despite the scars we carried. James, my father-in-law, was slowly regaining his sense of self-worth and purpose. With Margaret's help and support, we explored various programs and activities for wheelchair users in our community. 
James once again began participating in activities that he had enjoyed before his accident, such as art and gardening. These newfound passions breathed life back into his spirit, and his once dull eyes regained a sparkle of vitality. Margaret, too, was undergoing a transformation. She had become an active member of our family once more, contributing her time and efforts to making our home a welcoming place. Her efforts to rebuild the trust she had lost were evident in her dedication to our family's well-being. As for John, his efforts to make amends were both heartfelt and sincere. He sought counseling to address the issues that had driven him away from our family in the first place. His journey toward personal growth and self-improvement was a testament to his commitment to becoming a better son and husband. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, we had learned that family was about embracing imperfections and supporting each other through the trials of life. The past would always be a part of our story, but it did not define us. We were forging a new narrative, one filled with hope, resilience, and the understanding that love could endure even the most trying of circumstances. As our family continued to heal and rebuild, Chapter 9 marked a pivotal moment. A chapter filled with hope and the anticipation of a brighter future. While our journey had been fraught with challenges and heartache, we were determined to face the future together, united by the bonds of love and resilience. Our home, once marred by tension and silence, had evolved into a place of warmth and connection. Laughter once again filled the air, and shared moments of joy became a cherished part of our daily lives. We had learned to appreciate the simple pleasures of togetherness, knowing that they were not to be taken for granted. James, my father-in-law, had undergone a remarkable transformation. His participation in various activities for wheelchair users had not only rekindled his sense of purpose, but it also introduced him to a community of supportive individuals who shared his passion. His zest for life had returned, and he was determined to make the most of every moment. Margaret had become an integral part of our family once more. Her commitment to rebuilding our relationships was unwavering, and her actions spoke louder than words. She had learned from her mistakes and was dedicated to making amends. Her presence in our lives was a testament to the power of forgiveness and the resilience of familial bonds. John, too, had made significant strides in his personal growth and redemption. His counseling had helped him confront the underlying issues that had led to his betrayal. He had matured into a responsible and loving husband, seeking to make up for the pain he had caused. Our family had come to understand that life was unpredictable and adversity could strike at any moment. However, we had also learned that love, forgiveness, and determination could help us weather even the most challenging storms. While the scars of the past would always be a part of our story, they no longer defined us. We were a family forever changed by the trials we had endured, but we were also a family with a newfound sense of strength and resilience. Our bonds had been tested, but they had emerged stronger than ever.